for us. Okay. Um, here we are, the beginning of August. I, I'm going to try to start saying that in these videos so that when I listen back to them later to decide what was what, I just open with what, what was what, right? So this is what, August 4th. Um, last night was the unboxing event, the Triplex unboxing event, which I thought was phenomenal. Um, I know many of you may not have heard things that were completely brand new to you, except for the new branding and those types of things. But for a lot of the Plexus world, the gut health thing uh, was primarily new information to them, if you can believe that. There was so much response that was like, this is so helpful. And I'm like, that's good. The more that catches on, the better as far as I'm concerned. So I'm excited about that. Um, we're going to listen to Monday Motivation, and I'm really excited. I actually had a phone call with another Jewel today who didn't even know I was having a team call tonight, didn't know anything, but she just um, started talking about this week's Monday Motivation, and I hadn't listened to it yet. This was way earlier today, and I, uh, I said, did you watch it? She said, oh, it's so good. It was Kyle Rainey. And um, specifically, she said it was just, basically it was about servant leadership. And I was like, ah, such a good topic, really excellent topic. And she said he, he um, presented it so well. So we're gonna jump on over to that. Let me see if there was something I was supposed to touch on. Oh, um, yeah, a couple things. Um, in the community group, um, what are they calling it? A jewel takeover. So jewels are going to be doing a take takeovers in the in, uh, Plexus ambassador community group on Facebook for the next three days, because anybody who registered for last night's event should have gotten uh, samples in your engage app giveaways, basically samples to give away codes for samples to give away. I'm going to try to word it the right way so people don't ask me questions uh, after they watch this video in two or three weeks because the, the codes are only good for today, tomorrow, and the next day, fourth, fifth, and sixth, I believe. Those particular codes can uh, for samples can only be given away until the sixth, those samples. Um, let's see. And Brienne's video for her, for the jewel takeover is in that group as well. So it was a really good video. If you guys uh, want to take the time to watch that, I think it was like 20 minutes there. She got lots of feedback about what a good video that was. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Credits, credits for samples, and then you'll turn it into a code. I guess that's what I'm saying. I guess they'll turn it in the, once you, once you put somebody through the, the um, I'm probably wording it wrong. Once you put someone through the app, then it'll turn it into their ability to use it. I think it's a, it, unless it's different than how they've been doing it, it'll be a code. Um, if you're in the social media challenge group that I'm doing right now, uh, we, I will tell you that I've probably had more feedback from the social media challenges, <laughs> um, which I think, I think I've been really weighing this out. Like literally today, I spent a lot of time weighing out, trying to figure out why that, that group seems to be so fruitful for people. And I think it just gets people into a habit and gives you um, some things to say and build up some confidence. And so um, teaching you how to use stories, literally giving you examples of different stories to use on Facebook, um, stories as in the, what goes across the top, not literally telling stories. Um, what goes the tro across the top, like add to your story on Facebook. Um, I've had more feedback about that group than anything I've done in years. So, uh, I, I, I plan to continue to do those as often as I come up with new content. So that, if you're not in that group, a lot of people, uh, have been having really great luck with actually having people join their team because they've been consistent in posting yeah. and people have been answering the polls and their stories. So that, uh, 
I was going to say, um, I'm reading what Diane said here. She said she never knew, knew how, how to do the stories until that group. And um, even I am learning more and more about all that as we go. Even today, I did my first where you where part of the story instead of a picture was a video, um, a little short video part of your stories. And I put a how to in there, how to screen record. So if you see someone do a little video in their stories and you're like, save, 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 and it won't save because it's not a photo, it's a video, the steps that you go through to actually screen record are in our group now. I will tell you, um, just I'll keep this brief, but if you're recording someone else's story, if you're recording a video, their name tends to be at the top. And then, you know, you know, the Facebook boxing in, it shows their name here and the, the hour or whatever at the bottom. So you almost have to do this thing. My daughter taught me how, where you, on my phone, just to give you an idea, let's see, on my phone to get to screen record, I go and I, I, this iPhone is relatively new. So other people, you get to your control panel a different way, but my control panel, ah, hang on. I think this is helpful when people see me do it. My control panel comes out of the corner like that. Do you see what I did? That, however you get to that screen on your phone, um, my old phone was different. I think I swiped from the bottom or something like that. And then what you're looking for is this, I think. Looks like a re, oh, whoops. Looks like a record button. I'm trying not to touch it. It's that one right there. It looks like a record. And then when you hit that, it's going to give you a three, two, one. Now it's recording whatever's on my screen. So like right now it's recording that. <laughs> and if I move it around, it's now it's going to be recording this. And if I had a video going, it would be recording that. And then I swipe back to the control panel. Sorry, I got I have to have it facing me. Back to this control panel and I stop record. Now, you may have watched that and thought, you recorded a bunch of crap you don't want and I did like I don't want <laughs> I don't want all, them to see everything I recorded because especially if you're recording someone else's video from a stories it'll have their name in it until you it settles down for a second and their name goes away that's how it happens lots of times their name will show up if you touch it their name will go away then once it's recorded beginning and end of it. If it's too long in the beginning, it's too long at the end. You can go in there and shave some off of it by literally opening up your camera roll, looking at the video and pushing edit and it'll give you little slider bars that let you shave off the end or shave off the beginning. Anything that you recorded that you don't want people to see. Like for example, where you saw all my notifications or you saw me switching screens. Is this, is everybody following me? I know you can't exactly, if you've never done it, you may not feel like you're following me because you're having to follow along or you need to follow along, but I didn't know how to do that exactly until today. My daughter taught me. It's all a matter of just knowing that you can edit it. So don't panic about being like, ah, it keeps getting all the wrong junk. Okay. Now, one more thing, checking my notes. I added, a, I added from last night's unboxing event, I added the disclaimers that they said that we could use with posts. I grabbed them from the unboxing event straight from where they said they were right below, pulled it. I put disclaimers and I put it in our team page. And then I said that inside a, you know, color thing, looks like a background. And I said down and the first comment underneath there is the disclaimers. So, what a disclaimer is for is if you put out a story that has questionable content as far as whether you are supposed to say, for example, like a name of a disease, or if you said something even like allergies or something, uh, or a headache, or 
there are certain things that you don't really think would be a problem and they can be. So anytime that there's a question, you just stick the disclaimer with it and rock on. Okay. So there's that. I'm covering all this stuff before we even watch Kyle's video. Um, in our social media group, the one that I put out there today that's about gut health, that I just put it out there probably, I think I scheduled it for around five o'clock today. So you may have not, may not have seen it yet or six o'clock, I'm not sure. Um, but it is the one that has the screen records in it. Um, I would say at the end of that one, put a poll on the last thing asking if somebody wants a sample. Use your stories to get rid of these, to get rid of, you understand what I'm saying? To utilize your samples, to put people in your app. I'm, I'm trying to hatch some ideas for you guys if there's anything you wanna be working on while um, while we're listening to this video. And I, the last thing I wanna mention before we start is um, I want to do a beautiful, like um, aesthetically pleasing event specifically for uh, gut health this month using the eucalyptus -y looking, whatever those were, they weren't eucalyptus, but you know what I'm talking about? I love the new branding. I think it's going to be beautiful. And so I kind of, I wanted to go ahead and schedule it tonight. Like I wanted to be able to give you a date tonight, but if you'll just keep your eye out in the team page, uh, so that when I do come up with a date, because I really want to know what kind of videos I'm going to have access to, maybe live testimonies I'd be able to get my hands on and beautiful branding. And a lot of times that'll come in the following three or four days as people start, you know, using their Canva app and other jewels making content or whatever, or me grabbing things out of people's stories that I see. So testimonies and that kind of thing. So I don't have a date yet. I didn't want to rush it because we're brand new into August. And um, lots of times I want to do an event early in the month. And this month I just felt like maybe it'll, probably won't be next week. It may be in the third week of August that we'll do it. That's my guess. So maybe if I was going to tentatively say whatever the third Thursday is. Not certain about that. Now, hmm, now we're really moving on. Okay, here we go. Okay. Is the chat box or is the Zoom box on top of the transcript? Can you see the transcript? No? Okay. Maybe that will work better. Here we go. Canada, maybe New Zealand and Australia, as well as Mexico. So good morning. Good morning, everyone. We're so thankful that you took the time to invest in yourself. I have to say, this is, I believe, one of the most underutilized training calls in Flexus. This is a call for leadership conversations for anyone who sees themselves as a leader in Flexus. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? <laughs> Good morning, Ms. Genevieve. How are you? I am doing so well. I'm so excited to be here with you. Are you guys excited to hear from Kyle? I have to tell you, uh, when we secured him, secured him, and it was securing him because he's a busy guy, uh, I was so delighted for him to share with you all. And I have to tell you, I think this is going to be one of those calls that you're going to want to have on, I don't know, pause, play, fast forward, rewind, all of the things, um, because I know that it's full of content that will make a difference in your life on a daily basis. And so this is a call for leaders, and it is a call given by our leaders to our leaders, especially our brand new leaders, but leaders never stop learning, just so that you understand. Like in in network marketing, I just want to give you all a little tip here. In network marketing, the role of the leader is to always promote leadership advancement. That's your job. 
So once you become even a silver, which is our first rank of leadership, and definitely by the time you are a gold, you are promoting the ranks of leadership. What does that mean? It means you are scanning your team and looking for people that have all of the character or showing signs, I should say, of leadership and constantly telling people you should join the ranks of leadership. You should join the ranks of leadership. By the way, you know what you should do this month? You should join the ranks of leadership and you should keep moving to your next level by inviting other people to do the same. You don't get to diamond by yourself. You don't get to emerald by yourself. And I was thinking about this today as I was on my little walk, Kyle, and I was like, you know what? This company has, is hitting a pretty good stride right now, right? We're hitting, a, I think we can all agree we're hitting a good stride. If you are a leader with multiple leaders on your team, you are getting a lot more impact out of this than if you are the only person on your team taking advantage of it. Are you guys picking up what I'm laying down here? Right? So if you want to start seeing exponential growth in your team, it starts with developing leaders and continuing to develop leaders. And so I think your conversation is super critical, especially at this time, Kyle. And I'm just curious, I'm gonna turn the call over to you in just a hot New York second, but I am curious to hear from you. Why did you pick the topic of influence? Well, first of all, let me just say thanks for letting me jump on here with you. I feel like I'm with Plexus Royalty right now. I'm on the <laughs> call in yeah, Like, I mean, if there's a Mount Rushmore of Plexus, you're up there somewhere. So, uh, no, you know, I, I chose this because what I, I, I have a passion for this topic because I believe no matter your size of network that you have, if you can wield the influence that you've been given well, and you can then accumulate it, I, I believe you can do some great things in this company and great things with your business. So I've seen people with the greatest systems in the world. And if they don't have influence and know how to use it correctly, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, true, so true. And the number one question that we get is, how do I get people to fill in the blank? How do I get people to? And so this, if you've ever wondered that, this is going to be your call. Um, if you are brand new and this is your first leadership call, I'm Genevieve Scori. I'm the Senior Director of Global Ambassador Training here at Plexus. And on the call is newly minted Diamond Ambassador, only by title. He's been a diamond for a long time, Kyle Rainey. So, Kyle, I'm just going to turn the call over to you. Oh, sorry. I have a couple of announcements. I do want to let you guys know that this call is recorded. And the best way to receive all of our call recordings is to sign up for the train me text. You can just simply from your phone, text the words train me to Plexus, which are the number 753-987. And then you will get a reminder for all of the training calls. And then you will also get a link right to your phone. There are also two other ways that you can be getting the call recordings, but I kind of think that's the easiest way to go, okay? And also want to let all y'all know that our August book has been selected, and it is No Excuses by Kyle Maynard. And just for the record, he's going to be our speaker. So Saturday, August 22nd at 9, p 9 a.m. Pacific time, you're going to get to get to hear right from Kyle, who, can I just tell you something? This guy is big money. He's like a big money speaker. Um, he actually is friends with Ryan Anderson, so he's, he's absolutely putting us a deal. Um, this is a great call. As we talk about leadership, this is a great call. Um, as you know, or may not know, this is a great story of a gentleman who was born with body issues and just big, you know, like over, Beth putting it mildly, but no excuse. Great, great, great story. And if I can give you a little bit of a hint, one of the things that we're trying to do here in Plexus is engage everyone, engage everyone. So those wholesalers, those brand new ambassadors trying very hard to learn something new, the more P and like, how did you love the event last night? Right? One of the things, leaders, one of our opportunities is to leverage events better. 
leverage events better. I'm not sure we all really understand how crucial it is to get as many people as you can to events as a recruiting mechanism. So when you click that link, you will sign up and reserve your spot for the book club. You're going to want to get that book, but this is an event that you can invite your entire team to. Think about engaging people. So um, that's my little plug for book club because I really feel like this is a great way to show people, listen, this company really does invest in us. This company really does help us be more and do more and, and have more. So without further ado, and I think the clip, we put the link in the, in the chat so that you can enroll. So without further ado, Kyle, tell us your story and take us, take us on a ride. All right, let's go. Hey, I, I, again, I'm really excited to be here. Um, my wife and I, uh, we live in Oregon. My wife is a diamond ambassador as well. We actually just recently became diamond silvers together. So it's a race now to see who can do the reentry leg uh, uh, faster. So we have nine kids. We live in Bend, Oregon. Now, I said nine kids. That's right. We have nine children. Uh, three were adopted. And we started our Plexus journey about five years ago. In fact, I think this month is our five, fifth year anniversary. Um, and I've been a pastor for 16 years, actually, at the last Sunday of this month, uh, August 30th, I'll be retiring from pastoral ministry uh, to go on to do some other things. But I've been a pastor for 16 years, uh, pastor currently at church here in Oregon. Um, and so our journey started five years ago, and, and I'm going to jump into influence. Uh, some of you have heard our story, but if you haven't, let me just give you some real quick cliff notes on, on how this all came about. So I had just... Um, I stopped uh, doing an interim pastorship, uh, so my job had completed in Portland. Uh, I was teaching at a local university, political science, and my department decided that it would be uh, it would be good to not rehire me because they didn't have a budget to do that. So I found myself jobless uh, out of nowhere, and so we began this this journey uh, with Plexus because. My wife was uh, struggling with health issues. I was struggling with health issues because whenever your finances are in order, health is the last thing you think about. And so uh, we had to go on government assistance. We had to go on welfare. We had to do all these things. Very humbling season for us. And then Cassie saw a friend talk about Plexus. And so we saved and, and scrimped up a lot of money and bought our first triplex because she just needed to feel better for all of our kids, for um, the sake of the future of our family. And the products were amazing and worked. And then she came to me one night, she goes, I need you on these products, I need you feeling better, but I think this may be the key, the platform that God has given us to be able to take us off this financial road of disaster that we find ourselves in. And five years later, we went from, uh, honestly, on welfare to seeking the welfare of other people. We've been able to give to our church more, we've been able to uh, put all of our children in private school. Three of our kids who were adopted were paid because of, uh, by their adoption was paid by um, the opportunity that Plexus brings. Uh, so when we say Plexus changes lives for our family, we mean literally giving children a forever family. And so it, it's been an incredible ride, incredible journey. Um, people always ask, are you done? Yep, we're done. No more kids. We're through. Uh, but we love being a large family. We love being a Plexus. And so um, as I jump into this topic of influence, I, I, I want to tell you before we get started how lucky we are. Uh, we have an incredible opportunity here with Plexus. You know that you're leaders in this company, but whenever we talk about influence, and particularly when it's in the network marketing world, sometimes uh, someone may find themselves in a company that doesn't have the integrity that Plexus has, doesn't do things the way Plexus does it, doesn't have the type of leadership like Jindy, like Alec, like Tarl. I mean, like sometimes they find themselves having to overdo their influence in order to make up for the lack of positive influence that their company has. But we don't have that issue. We literally work for the greatest company on the world. Plexus has changed our lives. And I'm telling you, five years ago, when Cass and I jumped into Plexus, the reason why we both believed in it right away is because of the leadership of this company, because how they care about the ambassador and they put people first. I mean, what type of influence um, would you have if you didn't do that? I mean, I don't think Plexus would be near as successful if that wasn't their motivation. So I'm excited to do that. So that's what's wonderful. We get to start off kind of with a head start. So let's talk about influence. Influence, everybody, everybody talks about influence now. Uh, John Maxwell says leadership uh, is just basically influence. And so before we jump into how to create it and cultivate it, what I want to talk to you a little bit about is just some introductory ideas of a platform.
applying influence to our lives. So the most perfect system, we just talked about this at the beginning of the call, the most perfect system, the most stellar approach, the most innovative strategies for growing your business will never breed the success you desire if you do not have influence. I have seen people come into this company with the grandest, greatest network ever that have systems that would blow your mind that people should write books about. But if they don't know how to wield their influence well in a positive manner that's people focused, it really doesn't matter. It really, your business will never take off and go where you need to go. And the message that you have will never be uh, given to the people in your community and your network that you want them to hear because you're not wielding your influence. You're not having the full effect that your system could be uh, taking place in your life and in your business. So the power of influence, really, it's a socialization tool. Um, that impacts our perception, our purchase, and our productivity. Now, I say that when I was teaching political science, I taught at several different universities, and we would talk about the beginning of the course of the semester, we talk about this idea of socialization. Um, all of us are influenced. You, you may not think of it, but you are actually influenced all the time by the media that we watch, by the, our background, how we grew up, our, our influence, our parents. It's funny, I tell people, you either uh, uh, politically side with your parents uh, because that's what they did or you did be, be in spite of them, right? So we are influenced by the culture. Where you grew up, uh, are you in the New England area, Northwest like I'm at, uh, but I grew up in the South. I mean, there's different cultures here. And, you know, it's about your background, your heritage. So socialization and, and how you're formed, how you think of, uh, how you process thoughts, how you develop your mindset. I mean, all those boils down to your influence and it's a socialization tool and influence, it seriously impacts our perception on the world. How do we see everything? How do we see ourselves? Uh, it influences our purchases. You know what? The most, um, really the most productive and successful companies you're not really buying the product. I mean, you are, but you're buying the story. They tell great stories, right? And it infects, it impacts your purchasing power is influence. And then also your productivity. If you are not an influential person, and if you don't have positive influence coming into your life, you're not going to be very productive. Um, also with influence, compelling influence does not tell others what to do, but it offers others how you can help. I have... I, I was raised in the South, right? And one of the famous and infamous sayings where I was from is, if you were smart, you would do this. You know what, honestly, no one really wants to hear that. Nobody wants to make themselves feel dumb because they don't take your advice. We're not in the sales game with Lexus, we're in the servant game with Lexus. And if you go from sales to service, you're gonna see your influence increase and your business grow. But don't tell others how what or this is what you should do. You know what you should do? See, everybody wants you to listen. They need to you listen to their story and then you can show them how they can get help. If you have a helpful influence and a helpful heart position and mindset, that's something way farther than you've got all the answers. I definitely don't have all the answers. In fact, when it comes to product knowledge, I look at my wife and go, What does that do again? Please tell me what's that strain on Pro 5 Like you don't need to have all the answers, but if you have a heart that's willing to help, your influence is going to increase. Finally, before we jump in on how to cultivate influence, um, there is this idea that you cannot wield influence. And I believe this with everything inside of me. You cannot wield influence if your passions do not line up with your purpose. Now, I'm going to say this. Every one of you have a purpose. I, I believe that with, with everything inside of me. And I believe that purpose is, is larger than, than what you really realize. I think some of us are beginning out life, right? We're in our early 20s, and, uh, or I mean, we're getting teenagers to play this now, but I mean, you're young and you have all these things, or you're like me, right? We're about to turn 40, and you got this midlife purpose thing happening, and you're trying to avoid the midlife crisis, you want the midlife purpose, right? And then some of us are beyond that in the another stage. No matter where you find yourselves, if your passion lines up with your purpose, you're going to see your influence increase. It, it, it'll be incredible. But I have never met anyone who wields brand influence if they're not passionate about what they're doing and if they don't have a clear purpose. We call it why a lot. Like some say, what is your why? I like that. I like that. But going a little bit deeper than your why is your purpose. What wakes you up in the morning? What, what, what gets you motivated? What's going to have you go and work really hard and try to help as many people as possible? 
that that purpose when it lines up with your passion your passion about helping people then your influence is going to increase so let's dive into it so how do we cultivate influence number one question Cass and i get on our team all the time how do you get people into the system into the funnel how do you reach more people basically it's influence right and the number one thing you know it we've heard it a thousand times is mindset it's it's mindset and i can tell you about five years ago i thought this whole idea of mindset was ridiculous i mean i really thought that you have to have a positive attitude a positive mindset that, that that's ridiculous no one can that doesn't make any type of impact whatsoever and man was i wrong when i started realizing how i speak to myself all the things that the negativity that i say to myself and how it's damaging my mindset i realized i was not unlocking my full potential so number one on how do we cultivate influences is establish your mindset how do we do that so First off, you are the gatekeeper of what influences you. When we talk about influence, everybody wants, about, wants to talk about first, how do I influence people? How do I influence people? How do I influence people? It, it, that's not the first step. The first step is how are you being influenced? You are the gatekeeper. You are the literal gatekeeper of what comes into your brain, what thoughts, uh, what messages, what opinions, right? Um, I, I love what Billy Graham says one time. He says, I turn my critics into coaches, right? What a wonderful mind shift. What a mindset shift that that, that, that is. But you are the gatekeeper, right? You are responsible to of what influences you. And so keeping out the negative, keep it now. We're not Pollyannic, right? We're not rose colored glasses, ignorant of the, of the uh, harshness of the world or the, the bad things can't happen. That's not it. But you have a choice on how to respond. And I think sometimes with mindset, we find ourselves reacting more than we are responding. Grand difference between reacting and responding. You know, as a parent of nine kids, sometimes I react, right? I react and I say things that I go to apologize to my children later. I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry. I, I should have responded to your negative behavior and not reacted to your negative behavior. See how that is? With mindset, you're the gatekeeper and you need to respond. And how are you going to protect yourself in your mind? Because you are so important and you have so many wonderful things to give to this world that you do not want to be debilitated by not being that gatekeeper. Secondly, if you do not feel valuable, you cannot add value to somebody else. It is impossible. Impossible. And when you try, it comes off fake. When you try, it comes off like you are actually trying and forcing it, right? If you do not feel valuable, you cannot add value to somebody else. Now, I'm going to pause here for a second because I want to really hit this point and we got a lot to talk about, so I'm, I'm going to speed through this, but you are value. You have been made, right, in the image of your creator. You have giftings that I don't have. You have a personality that I don't have. You have characteristics and amazing talents that I don't have, that your neighbors doesn't have, that people in this world do not have. And the world needs you to show up. The world needs you to understand that you have value and you have value to give. And some of us grew up in a situation I did not. I had wonderful parents who told me all the time that I'm valuable, that I'm loved, that I'm cared for. And it wasn't based on how I was performing. It was based on them just, just sacrificially loving me all the time without me having to perform. But some of us didn't grow up like that. Some of us have not at all ever had this this voice of positivity speak into you and say, you have value. So if that's true this morning, let me tell you, you've got value. You've got something special and the world needs you to show up. Okay, I, 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 I won't preach, I promise, Jimmy, I won't preach, here we go. Um, next, uh, and finally, as we start establishing our mindset, uh, what you allow in your mentality will directly impact your productivity. Let me say that again. What you allow in your mentality will directly impact your productivity. And in that, in that same vein, you need to find your voice and drown out the rest. Okay. I, I think that Plexus gives us wonderful scripts to tell people. I think Plexus, uh, I, I love the, the idea that we're a company that where ambassadors borrow posts from one another. Don't act like you've never done it, right? <laughs> I mean, that, you know, if we're not careful, that's all we do is borrowing posts, right? We're reposting, reposting, reposting. But a long ago in ministry, when I first started out as a pastor, I started listening to all these other pastors that I had a lot of respect for. It. And then my mentor came to me and said, Kyle, you need to find your voice because when I'm listening to you preach, your mannerisms and your sayings and the things that you're doing sound like this guy and this guy and this guy. And it's not, not authentic to you. Find your voice, drown out the rest. And, do, and your mentality, what you let in will directly impact your productivity. So mindset, that's how we cultivate influence. It's an internal thing. This is an internal thing, guys. Before we can influence other people outside of ourselves, 
It's an internal thing that we have to create. Mindset. Secondly, is heart position. Now, this is something that I've kind of developed over the years. And um, because we talked about, I, I was listening to all these great speakers and you know, the great Bob Heilig and all these guys that are talking in the network marketing industry about mindset, mindset, mindset. It's fantastic stuff. But I started thinking, what about heart position, right? If our mindset is wonderful and perfect and amazing and positive and ready to influence people for good, but our heart's in the wrong position, really, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, what is this all this for? It's not going to fill us up. It's not going to be satisfying at the end of the day. Have you ever found yourself that you met a goal because your mindset was right? You push that goal, push that goal, you hit that goal. You know, no one's getting in your way, running over anybody who gets in your way. And you reach the summit and you're all by yourself. You reach the goal, you're all by yourself. And the reality is because maybe your heart position wasn't in the right place. Maybe it wasn't centered on people. So you have mindset for influence to cultivate it. But it's also about heart position. The impact of your influence is hard work and hard work. Right? We think to ourselves, well, I can do this. I got a goal. That, that's awesome. If you get up every morning like, I'm going to slay today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my all, and I'm going to reach my goal. Um, I, I love what John Maxwell says. I'm a big Maxwell fan. If you, you'll, you'll learn that about me. But he says there's a difference between um, believing you can do it and knowing that it will be done. Right? Some of you have instances in your plexus journey where you're like, I know I'm going to hit this right. And you do. Right? That's amazing. But it is not just hard work to build influence, it's hard work. It's the people that you're actually focused on to influence. That perfect couple, that perfect individual, that friend of yours, that gal, that person that you picture in your mind that you want to help, that, that, that really pushes you forward, that's the hard work. That's gonna keep you going going. That's gonna make it fulfilling when you hit that summit, when you hit that top goal, when you hit where you wanna be. It's gonna be fulfilling because you know all the people that you helped along the way. Um, the energy you project will draw or repel people, right? That's hard position work. If you wake up in the morning with a great mindset, but you have a bad energy about you, you're not you're not really focused on people. You're going to come off salesy. Um, you're going to come off uh, maybe even just a little bit forceful. But the energy rejectable, they will either draw or repel people. We had early on in our in our plexus journey, we had a, an ambassador to join us, and, and um, she she didn't she didn't stick with us. Um, but she did a lot of negative posts about the world, about politics, about religion, about all these things. It was just really negative all the time. And she would ask me, like, I just can't get anybody to join my team. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just shoot you straight. And, and, and it's because I care about you. Maybe the, the energy you're putting out through social media is super negative, right? And a lot of vision to not want to be around negativity. We want to bring around positivity. We want to be around contentment. We want to be around security and not hostility. I mean, there's some people in the world that you've met and you're immediately thinking that one person's like, oh, I know that one person loves negativity, but that those are fair and far few between. So it's the energy project will draw repel people. Next, success is not always breed significance, but significance always breeds success. Now, at the end, this is what, one thing, this is silly maybe to you, but for influence sake, right? One of the things that I have, I'm going to give you a little insight on how my brain works. Um, I think about the legacy in the long run. When I'm done with like this, when I'm uh, at, at, at an age where I can't do this anymore and I'm, I'm seeing my years dwindle, I want to be known as a significant person, not a successful person. Um, and it goes back to hard work, right? You can be really successful in this company. And you can wield influence, but in the end, it's about significance. It's about significance. Are you making a significant impact on people? If you wake up and say, not maybe it's I want to I want to help 100 people today, fantastic. But if you can only significantly help two, help two, right? You you want to have that relational uh, impact on people because all the success in the world, people. I'll be honest. I don't remember successful people in my life. I remember significant people. My father, my grandfather, a couple of the teachers I've had, a couple of mentors of ministry I have, because they, they, they weren't big names. They weren't celebrities, right? Nobody knows them outside of our, our you know, circle of influence, but they made a significant impact on me. So significance over success. Um, and then finally, uh, we need to focus on our outcome and not not just our output, right? When it comes to influence, and when it comes to heart position in particular, right, and where your heart's positioned, if we're constantly looking at how much output we can put out there, how much output we can put out there, you're gonna burn out, right? You're gonna burn out. It's about the outcome. Did my person who is 
not feeling their best, having their best health after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days is the outcome that they're feeling better. You may not hit that goal. You may not, but you're going to get there, right? But you're going to influence that person. If you're walking with them along that journey, if you're walking with them along this time and you're worried about the outcome of them, then their output, because I'm telling you right now, your influence will absolutely be destroyed if you're just about output, right? How are they producing? What is this producing? How am I getting ahead of this? How is this person helping me get to this goal? No, no, it's the outcome, right? How is this person feeling? How are they doing? How is the state? Is the mom able to leave their job and go stay at home because of the plexus opportunity? Is she feeling better? Is the husband, uh, is their blood sugars getting regulated? You know, all the things that plexus help is the outcome of the outcome. So we have mindset, we have heart position. And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to cultivating influence, and then we're going to talk about influence killers and we'll be done. I promise it won't be too much longer, is architecture culture. About two years ago, almost two years ago, Cass and I looked at each other like, man, we really need to change the culture of our team. Not that it was a bad culture, but it, it wasn't exactly hitting the mark where we wanted to hit. So we decided to have a complete overhaul and, and really had this, uh, it's funny, we, we developed this thing called Team Rise is our, is our name. And it's funny, that convention that year was Rise Up. And I always tell Alec, hey, I, I need royalties for that, man. I think y'all took that from us, right? But the funny thing is when we change is that we rise together. Together we rise and we went more servant-based in our culture. It changed the face of our, of our team, really. Um, so your conviction establishes your culture, right? If you want an influential culture within your team, because we've talked about the mindset and the heart position, which is going to help you get people into your team, but when they actually are in your team, you want to architect a culture and your convictions will establish your culture. One of my favorite teams out there is Chad and Chris Deary. If you're on their team, give a shout out. I love them because I like watching some of the Chris's videos because it's like it emulates a lot of the culture that we're after. Um, they're very spirit led. They're Okay, did it, did everybody lose me for a second? Hang on, let me let me get where I can see more faces. Am I back? Kim, can you see me? Can you hear me? Can anybody see me or hear me? You're kind of frozen. I can hear you, but your face is frozen. Okay. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi off and turn it back on and I'll, I'm crossing my fingers. Hang on everybody, I'll be right back. Am I still frozen? You can see me, you can see me, hear me moving around. Okay. Yes. Okie dokie. Um, I, 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 I did catch exactly, I happened to look up at exactly when, um, when it started buffering, at least on my end or whatever it did. So I'm going to back the video up maybe a minute so that we don't miss any of it. Um, uh, sorry about that are we still recording it okay it looks like we are so just give me a second see if it'll let me connect back in to this uh 28 minutes in so i'm gonna scoot it back see if this looks about right to you guys Right. But the funny thing is when we change is that we rise together, together we rise and we went more servant based in our culture. It changed the face of our, of our team, really. Um, so your conviction establishes your culture. Right. If you want an influential culture within your team, because we've talked about the mindset and the heart position, which is going to help you get people into your team. But when they actually are in your team, we want to architect a culture and your convictions 
will establish your culture. One of my favorite teams out there is Chad and Chris Deary. If you're on their team, give a shout out. I love them because I like watching some of the Chris's videos because it's like it emulates a lot of the culture that we're after. Um, they're very spirit led. They're very just about serving people. Your culture needs to reflect your conviction. And I'm telling you, if you have not established, right, your authentic culture in your team, someone will do it for you. Okay. Now you may say, well, I have a team of three people. Fine. You need to start establishing culture. I've got a team of 3000 people that start establishing culture because when you don't establish a culture, someone else is going to come in and influence your team. And that influence may not be what you want. Right. And so next on, when it comes to architecture, your culture, we help others on your team establish their why and be flexible with the how. Okay. You want to influence your team. And, and I think sometimes a lot of, you know, we hear this a lot sometimes from people on our team. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm working with my ambassadors, working with my downline. And I just, I don't seem to have a lot of impact on them because I'm telling them what to do. I'm telling them, this is how you got to do it. This is how I did it. This is how I succeeded. This is how I got to this level, this rank. Well, you know, pump the brakes because the influence you're trying to wield there on your team. Okay. You can have the greatest heart position, the greatest uh, mindset, but but have you established the why for them? Do they have their why? Do they have their purpose? And then let them find their voice. Let the how be flexible, okay? Some people, um, I, I, there's some people on our team, they cold message 20 people a day. That's what they do. And, and that's amazing. Uh, some people on our team have never put out a cold message in their life, and they still are successful. Great, wonderful. The how can be flexible. You know, now I, I believe Plexus gives us an incredible um, share, send, and invite type situation. I, I love that, and then we have the power of three, and all those things are great systems out there. But but let the let establish the why, establish the purpose, but then affect them and influence them by giving them a little bit of flexibility on the how. Right? Now, doesn't give them a uh, reason to be lazy, right, or or not do anything. But let them be flexible on the how, because what you're doing may not technically work for them and who they are with their community and their realm of influence. Finally, um, we have, I have a little saying that I always tell people, we model influence, we inspire other people, we coach them, and we multiply it on our team to increase our collective influence. If you want to see a multiplication of your influence, you've got the right mindset, you've got the right heart position, and you've architect, architected your culture, then model what you want to see done influentially on your team. Inspire people to do it by being vulnerable, sharing your story, sharing your highs, your lows. If you're just constantly talking about your mountaintop experiences and not let people revealing the valleys that you've walked through, then you're going to come up off not authentic, inauthentic to them. And, and they're going to feel like, man, like they're just a blessed life and nothing ever wrong goes for them. And, and, you know, and so you want to be really honest with them. You want to coach them, right? You want to coach people. Uh, Cassie is a, man, a fantastic coach. I, I'm, a, I'm an average coach. <laughs> She's a fantastic coach. I think she has about four to five meetings a week with her leaders, of different leaders coaching them, uh, helping them build their influence, inspire them. See, the thing is, sometimes we think we got to influence a thousand people. Sometimes you just need to influence 10, right? 10 amazing leaders, five amazing leaders, and let them then multiply that influence beyond that, right? So you don't have to touch base with all the people and do all the things. Maybe for some of us, it's coaching up the strong leaders or the leaders that can be developed that you see potential in and increase your collective influence. So those are some ways that we can create influence. We have to have the right mindset. Uh, the right heart position, right? Mindset that's new and made for some of us. Heart position and architect our culture, right? Now, let's talk about influence cooler, pillars really quick and then we're done. Um, these are three. These are probably not new to you, new new ideas, but they are just the enemy of influence. They're, and they're enemy of really any kind of productivity or anything positive you want to do in your life. The first one is insecurity. Insecurity is one of those terrible emotions and feelings that you are not valuable, right? We talked about this earlier. You're valuable. Stop saying that you're not. You are valuable. You're like, well, Kyle, I've, I've had all these things happen in my life. I've messed up here. We've all messed up, right? We've all uh, made mistakes, but today is a new day, right? You have value and your self-worth right? It's going to immediately impact your influence, right? So don't let insecurity kill your influence because if you come off insecure to people around you about, well, um, maybe you should join Plexus. It's kind of a great thing. It's kind of cool. No one's going to care about that. No one say, you know what? Plexus has changed my life. And I don't care if you think I'm the Plexus crazy lady. Who cares? Who cares? You know what? When people, you know, in the beginning, they message us like, oh, you're that network marketing couple. You know, you should, you're in 
ministry, you know, you should be ashamed. And I'm like, you know what? All my kids are in private school. We're off of welfare. We just bought our new house. Uh, we're establishing legacy. We're giving to our church. We're starting ministries. We're impacting people for the kingdom. We'll be the crazy plexus people. Totally cool with that. Totally cool with that. Totally good with that, right? Do not let ever, anyone else tell you what your value is and what you bring to the table. Insecurity is an absolute, absolute influence killer. Secondly, is scarcity. We are in the greatest movement in five years that I've seen in Plexus. We have so much momentum going right now. I've not seen a summer like this ever in Plexus. It's been incredible. And despite the global pandemic, despite all the things that the, the world is facing right now, we find us thriving, right? Because we've been people focused. But don't think when you see so-and-so go and rank up and you haven't hit that rank yet, or so-and-so just um, hit this PV or got these many people and they... Uh, don't let scarcity sneak in and go, well, there's just not enough for me. It's, there's just, yeah, it's all done. There's not enough room at the top for me. Are you kidding me? We had more jewels signed up and, and rank up in the past two months we've ever in the history of this company. There is room for you, right? There is room for you. But scarcity mindset will absolutely kill your influence because you won't. Number one, insecurity is like, well, I don't have enough value. I'm not worthy, which you are, but I'm not worthy to pursue this goal. Scarcity is, I don't have to pursue this goal because it's not going to be there when I get there. Both ridiculous. And then negativity. And Cass and I are negativity police. We do not let negativity get our team. We do not let negativity. Now, we have open dialogue and conversation. We let people vent. We let people um, air their grievances, but we keep it positive. We keep it positive. It's not because we're Pollyannic, not because rose-colored glasses, not because we're ignorant of the, of the woes of the world, but we know that negativity can be an absolute infection that can destroy your influence within your team and outside of your team. How can you have this negative mindset? How can you have this negativity conversations? And, and a lot of times people build relationships off negativity, which is just absolutely ridiculous, but it will seep into your social media posts. It'll seep into your productivity, to your systems, to your mindset, to your heart position, and absolutely kill your influence. So here's some, some questions to ask ourselves as we're kind of wrapping this up. Number one, and you've heard me hit it a lot, um, do I feel I have value? Now, I know that maybe you're watching this going, well, I, mean, I really wanted nine pragmatic steps to how to get more influence. I, and I don't have that for you because they're not nine steps, they're not 90 steps, right? Everyone's journey is going to be different, but it's about uh, positions, mindset position, heart, heart position, and and culture position is really what you need to focus on. And that may take you a thousand steps or 10 steps. I'm not really sure about your specific journey, but I do know you have to ask yourself the question today. And I want you as a leader, ask yourself, do I have that? Do I have that? Okay. Now the answer is yes, but you've got to believe that, right? Am I pouring value into others, right? Like I said earlier, you can't give value that you don't have, right? You can't hand out value that you do not have. Thirdly, are relationships I am building just benefiting me or also someone else? That's hard position, right? Um, if your mentality is I'm going to friend 10 new people on Facebook, I'm going to go into this mom's group, I'm going to do this because I want to hit this goal, I want to hit this right, people are going to see through you. They're just going to see through you. It's going to come off uh, not authentic. It's going to come off like you're using them. Are you building meaningful relationships and are they benefiting someone else? See, you're in a relationship with people when it comes up. But when someone clicks on Plexus and signs up, they don't believe Plexus yet, right? They don't have the products. They're hoping Plexus will come through, and we know they will because we know these products are amazing. They're placing their trust in you. They're entrusting you, and that is something to really steward well and to really see as a precious thing. Because someone's saying, I'm trusting you with my, my health, with an opportunity, with saying the things you're saying in hopes that it may benefit me. So are you building relationships that benefit not just you, but someone else? And then am I pouring belief into everyone or only ones that prove they deserve it? One thing early on Cassie and I just established is that we're not going to make anybody prove themselves to get our time and to get our belief in them. Now, we can't give time to everybody. And we really have a uh, system and a leadership strategy in place where we pour most of our time into our leaders, to our level ones, and then that trickles down. But 
they don't have to prove it to us. And I think we find ourselves in a real prove it mentality in this network. Uh, thankfully not in this company, it's not really affected this company, but if you have this thing, well, they just, you know, this new person comes into your, into your organization, into your business, and it's, well, they're just almost like a master. They're not. Give them a little bit of your time. Don't, don't make them prove it because you could be influencing them and they could be the next, you know, I don't know, uh, could, you know, blame your famous plexus like star that you loved here. You know, they could be, you know, um, that, that, that next Jen Hawkins, right? They could be the next Jessica Hefley. They could be the next, you know, whomever, right? That, that could be that person. That, that, that you're you're giving time to and it's just because you give them a little bit of time you get a little belief and they didn't have to prove it that they may prove to be one of your greatest assets then finally is the influence i'm seeking going to change someone's life today am i seeking influence for my own benefit or the lives of other people and i'm telling you when you seek to influence other people based on their well-being all the things you want will come into play all the influence you've ever wanted to wield in your life to affect people for good will happen because your people focus, not points focused, your your story focused, not success focused, right? You're trying to make significance and not just a goal, right? So influence on its own uh, is neither positive or negative, but can be used for either depending on who wields it. And let me end with this. And I don't know if you have time for questions or not, but they'll jump back on here. Living significant lives that change the world really boils down to one life influencing another. I pray that you yield your influence well. I hope this has been helpful for you. It's been a joy to present this to you. And uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Holy moly, man. That was so good. I'm like, did I, I, did I call it? Did I call it, y'all? I told you, you are going to want to listen to this over and over and over. Kyle, when's the podcast coming out? Do you know? <laughs> well, soon. <laughs> right. yeah, awesome. Very, very good. That was, so I was taking notes. Were you guys taking notes? I was taking notes. So true. So much of what you said is so true. And we are so, yes, thank you for pouring into us. So many notes taking, I know, you know, when the chat gets quiet, I always know the talk is good. <laughs> Or like I can't type and chat at the same. I can't take my notes. Um, does anyone have any questions? We have time for a couple of questions. If you guys want to hang on here, um, yeah, this call was amazing, right? It was amazing. I hope y'all hype it up because I feel like every leader in our company needs to hear this call. It will just bless them significantly. So we need to share this link and talk it up when you get it, y'all, because this sets the tone. Um, I love exactly what you said about culture, by the way. Um, people will will create their own culture if you're not if you're not creating your own culture. Uh, so good. My hand hurts from writing so fast. Um, this is a great, great question. This is what are some action practices to build mindset? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we can read all the books, you know, and, and that's and, and there's some wonderful ones out there. Um, one of the key ones for us was how to talk to yourself. Um, that's that's great. What to say when you're when you're talking to yourself? Yeah, and um, and there's Chad Tom's Great that. one. Um, yeah. One of the practices I think that, um, that that Cassie and I try to do when it helps us our mindset is that we try to keep us there accountable for our mindset. Now I, that like I I used to be a pretty cynical person. Just to be really honest, I mean, people were like, oh, you know, you're, and I'm, a, I'm actually an introvert. I'm a, I'm a forced extrovert. I, I laugh all the time. You're like, oh, you, you know, you must be this introvert. You must love people. I love people. Um, but in my introvertness, I used to, I, I, there's a lot of cynicism that kind of came up. And if I'm not careful, right, and if something doesn't go our way, we don't hit a goal, something slow, something, you know, whatever, I'll just go, man, I just, I can't believe it. And my wife's like, no, hold on. <laughs> Remember where we were, right? Remember where we are now. Remember where we want to go. So, so one of the things that we do is keep each other accountable. And I think I have little anchor reminders in my life. Um, in my wallet right now, I can pull out and show you my food stamps card. That helps my mindset. When I want to complain, when I want to be negative, I remember being, I take that out. And I literally, Jen, be able to take it out, look at it, and go, I remember being in the line uh, at, you know, whatever big grocery store and being so embarrassed and being so just, and there's no shame in it. You know, there is no shame. I was so thankful now that it was there to help my family. 
you know, I was very thankful, but I just remember thinking, um, this is just the most humbling place I could ever be in my life. I'm failing my family, all these things. And so now that we're not in that season, and I know that some people are watching this, they may be in that season. Let me just know we love you. We're, we're praying for you and you can do this, right? You can do this. But I just want to, I, I share that because it's an anchor for me. It's a mindset anchor that I look back at and say, you know what? I can be negative because maybe I didn't, I was, I was off my goal by five points, but I remember this time. You know, I remember this moment in my life. And so it, 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 it helps um, with our with our mindset. Uh, four of our children have high special needs, high medical needs from adoption and such as that, um, and came into our family, and they're an anchor point for me too as well. Um, I have uh, one of my sons who has a rare form of dwarfism, and only 30 people ever has ever had it, this rare form, and his life expectancy isn't, isn't as long as the rest of us, but he is, um, the doctor's now predicting that he is going to just zoom past that expect. He's going to bust all the, the barriers. That's a, that's a mindset anchor for me, you know? So I think if you have mindset anchors that help you remember where you were, where you are and where you want to be, I think that helps as a practice for us to stay positive um, and, uh, and not ignorant because there are negative realities in our world. We know that for sure, right? Facing a global pandemic, but, um, but, but to have those anchors to hold on to whenever you feel like you're floating into negative mindset land, you know? Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Question? Anyone? Someone asked about a favorite John Maxwell book. What John Maxwell book would you recommend? Well, you know, you know, um, uh, there is uh, the, the, there's one he made just for network marketers that I would suggest. It's called The Power of Five, um, and, and, and it's and, and it's incredible. Uh, I can um, throw the link, or we'll find the link up here pretty soon. But it, it's it's an amazing. Um, Jen uh, Hawkins invited Cassie and I to be part of that book launch. We got to go and meet John Maxwell and be a part of his training for two days. And he wrote it. He's never wrote a, a industry specific um, book before until now. And it's all about for network marketers. And network marketers helped him write it. And it's it's for the. I would I would hand that book to any person who joins your Plexus business that says, I think I might want to share. Here's this. Take this book, read it. Let's get on a Zoom call and talk about it because it's it, it's it's basic, but it's powerful and, and insightful. And it's really cheap. It's like 10 bucks. I mean, it's like nothing. And it's an easy read. Um, I don't think it's 100 pages. And, and it's awesome. Um, so I would, I would suggest that for, for our industry. It's really great. Yeah, and that's an industry-specific book, but anything that John Maxwell offers, particularly on the subject of leadership, he wrote, if you feel like you have trouble relating to people, there's a whole book on how to, you know, how to treat people, like he kind of did the updated version of how to win friends and influence people, um, so can't get just anything that John yeah. Maxwell writes. I mean, they're, they're all great, they're all great. That's 100 percent, 100 percent. Okay, well, Kyle, this has been a truly, truly, truly fantastic. I am, in, I'm inspired and motivated. Um, I gotta, I gotta go do some recruiting. Oh wait, I can't. So <laughs> <laughs> send them our way. We'll have to send some people around. I'm telling you, y'all. This is why we do what we do. Kyle is a living, breathing version of all that can be possible if we are willing to get out of our comfort zones, share, be the crazy plexus person in a good way, you know? Um, I, I think about that every day. So thank you all very much for your time and we will talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. Okay. So I probably should check the chat really quick, see if you guys are yakking over here. Okay, no, just frozen, okay? So um, I was curious if anybody had anything that they really liked from tonight. I loved, this is gonna be go down as one of my favorites, but mindset is one of my favorite topics. So uh, anybody have anything that really resonated with them tonight? Feel free to type it out for us if you'd like, or if you had any questions, maybe if something didn't, um, yeah, we all have something to offer. I agree. I love that part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and 
talk, but if anybody has anything they want to type out, feel free to. Um, I loved how he talked about establishing um, your culture within your team. And I loved how he talked about, because if you don't, someone will. And I've found that to be true. I also loved how he was mentioning uh, Chad and Krista. And just, I wanted to share my experience of being, um, being upline to those two and the culture on their team. They have an incredible culture on their team. And uh, I can remember um, early on Krista saying stuff to me about um she i think i think she's glad that she landed on our team probably because there's so much freedom to just be who you are on our team like if you wanted to start a um start a team page and have it be sp very specific about your own culture and that type of thing and chad and krista have such a special way of relating and connecting to people and uh, people just connect to their hearts and they can just share from their heart and it really doesn't even matter what they're talking about um they connect so well and so easily and um this is i'm just going to phase right into what i wanted to say next and see if this will make sense to some of you um, I heard Sonia Dudley say something one time, I'm paraphrasing here, that um, I, I, what, what, I got to tell you what my experience with Sonia when I heard her say this. At that time, I only knew that she joined after me, um, quite a while after me. I mean, it wasn't like a month or two after me, but we went Emerald around the same time. Not exactly, I don't think, but like I went Emerald and then she may have, may have been, been, she may have been the same month. I don't remember. It's not relevant except for to say that she started after me and I was going fast, y'all. Like I was like fast tracking, getting there, I thought. And then she started, like I was already in the business for a while. She started and she got there fast. And I remember at the time, just the concept was like, how does that work? Like, I've been working this really, you know, consistent. And I heard her say one time, she's like, I was in, she was in a different network marketing company. She's like, I was in a different network marketing company. I want to say she was in it for maybe 20 years. I'm, that sounds crazy, but I think maybe that's what she said. And when Plexus came along in her life, everything about it, some of the stuff that even Kyle said when he was talking about, um, Basically, we don't have a lot of poop we have to cover up with our company. So it's kind of an open playing field. If you are ready, if your mindset is ready and, you know, and you stumble upon this, it's kind of like so many things, especially I would say right now, so many things are already lined up for you to grab the ball and put it in the hoop. And um, the distinct difference would have been, I didn't have years of experience. I didn't have years of uh, failure in network marketing. Now, had I been in network marketing, I probably would have had years of that because that's really the majority of the stories you hear, uh, especially old school network marketing is you hear lots of stories of, yeah, I knew someone one time who made a lot of money, but the majority of the people I know lost their butts in network marketing. So had I been, had I had lots of experience, I mean, I have signed up for this and that in the past, little things here and there, but I never really had a complete concerted effort in it. And, but had I had all that experience, um, I would have probably had enough falling down and getting back up that by the time Plexus would have entered my life, it would have been a similar experience for me. Now, the reason I share that with you is because, I'm trying to see how, some people start Plexus ready, meaning they've already gone through their mindset junk and all the stuff Kyle was talking about. They already know the culture within their heart. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't even know there was a thing. Like my own, like I had to, I didn't know I was doing this, but I was being molded by, um, I, I don't even like the word failures, 
but I was being molded by trying something. It doesn't work. Trying something different. That didn't work either. Trying something that worked a little bit better, so on and so forth. So whatever you want to call that, I went through seasons of attempting, giving it my best, what I thought using my intuition, the best that I knew how. And then once you get into a rhythm, it's like, okay, I've learned from my, my experiences, whether you want to call it mistakes or not, you learn from your experiences and you shift further and further. That's basically the way I see it. You shift further and further away from the things that don't fit. They might work for other people even, but if they don't fit you, if they don't fit your personality, if they don't fit, fit um, a projected, like a future culture for who you are and who you want your, what you want the culture of your team to be. Um, a lot of teams within my team have such a strong culture that they have their own team pages. They do their own team calls. They do their own events. They do their own whatever. And at first I didn't know what to do with all of that because I was like, um, well, it wasn't like that at first. I should say like that. It wasn't like that at first. I was leading a whole bunch of other people. And really quickly I realized um, a lot of these people have strong leadership skills and they're being put in follower, follower positions. You know what I mean? Like they're following my lead. They might have a totally different culture personality set and they're drawing in people that they're drawing, drawing people within their leg of my team that they resonate with the, you know, same. Same type of mindset, same type of background, those same, same type of past experiences, so on and so forth. So uh, as they branched off and formed their own team, their own team culture and all of that, that everything that goes with that, it was kind of like going, you know, they're out of the nest and you're like, okay, like you feel like you lost a chunk of people that went on and did their own thing here and did their own thing here. And then after a while of being like, am I supposed to be okay with that? Not okay with that? Like, I don't know. There's not a, there's not really an instruction manual for how you're supposed to feel about things. I finally realized, wow, if that's a team of 400 people, or if that's a team of 2,500 people that are part of my team, if that's a leg of 4,000 people, whatever it might be, those are 4,000, that is a leg of 4,000 that are not looking to me for answers. They're looking to her for answers and to him for answers because they have their own team, their own team culture, all of that stuff. That's another reason I have figured out from a few conversations I've had recently that some people get freaked out at the whole idea of leadership because they see teams of thousands of people and they're like, I don't know how to do all that. Like, how do you manage all that, right? Well, you don't. Especially if you really will, if you'll examine yourself and realize I wasn't designed to do it all, not expected to do it all, and would probably be getting in the way if I tried to do it all. Does that make sense to everybody? Like, I, I can promise you, if I were to jump on, I mean, I'm in Chad and Krista's uh, team page and if I were to try to go in there and start organizing things and leading events and going live in their team page and try I would be in the way they wouldn't treat me like that at all but I'm saying they don't need it they don't they got their thing going and if I were trying to do that I, it would be reckless on my part for their team for my my whole team as a whole everything so sometimes the whole concept of I don't know how to manage all these people, I don't know how, it's not that. That's not how it works. Hopefully, you're roots and winging people. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're like, get you some strong roots right here. Roots, roots, come on, come on, everybody. Get your roots right here. Let's get you rooted in gut health and mindset. And let's get you rooted in uh, understanding servant leadership. Now, everybody got it? Okay, now, go. Duplicate it duplicate it and so if you are for example let's say if you're within my bigger uh, if you're within my big team page and you're like I don't have a team page of my own that's fine stay within my culture if mine resonates with what you attract to plexus 
And then after, after a while, if you're like, okay, seems like I'm attracting something that's different than what would resonate with Lori's leadership. Well, in that case, form your own team page, do all your own team, everything. And then also as that starts happening within your team culture, you get, give them the roots and then let them have their wings. And that's what, what basically, that's basically what we do. And, um, I've kind of established this working relationship with so many of my legs that says, I'll know you need me when you message me. And other than that, that's it. Like I don't, I don't go around checking on them all the time. I mean, I might check in and congratulate or say, way to go or something, but I don't pressure people just because I don't like to. And I also don't check in all the time. I have an open door policy with my team. If they need something, come to me, especially my upper levels. Um, if they need something and they come to me, I'm, it's open door for me. But also, uh, they know that. They know that I'm not going to harass them otherwise. Pretty much everybody gets it without it being said. So in case that was anything that's um, kind of been a pause or hesitation on your part where you're like, I don't, I don't know how you manage everything, for, if, how a diamond, for example, manages everything. And the fact is you don't, especially if you're roots and winging people. Give them their roots, then push them out of the nest and say, go, 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 go. Because um, if you think about it, I'm, I'm, for example, Chad and Krista's team is one of the biggest legs on my team. And I, gotta, I, gotta, I ain't got to do nothing for them. Like occasionally, before Krista was on the diamond page, uh, occasionally I might see something that I would think, she won't know this because I'm her diamond upline. I'm the one that's required to tell her this. You see what I'm saying? Like, so I'll be like, hey girl, something I saw you won't see yet. Then she has the information, then let her do it kind of deal. Does that, is that ever kind of understand what I'm saying? Resonating? Okay. Um, okay, hang on. It's, got, it's gotten dark in this room, so I'm just checking my notes one more time. I'm just going to go down the bullet point one more time really quick here at the end that just all the things that I mentioned at the beginning, the social media challenge group has been very fruitful. You're going to want to be part of that. If you were doing it right now, it started yesterday. Um, Brianne's video in the community page from today would be a good resource. Um, if you didn't get to watch the unboxing last night, I think that's an uh, imperative. Use your codes by the 6th. And don't forget about the fact that I put disclaimers on the um, butterfly team page so that you can have that uh, as a resource when you need it. Now, um, does anybody, I, I just talked right on top of what I, when I asked you guys questions earlier, does anybody have anything they wanna add or a question they wanna ask before I skip to the next segment? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to close this out with a prayer and I'm going to actually repeat what Christia said here. She says she likes what Bob Heilig says. Network marketing is really personal development on steroids with a paycheck. And that has been so true for me, for my family. Um, even the chance like, in the big scheme of things, homeschooling my children probably would not have been possible if I wasn't doing entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial. <laughs> Christia said she added the on steroids part of the quote. <laughs> Sounds like something he would say. So um, if, if I were not doing something from home that was working for myself, probably wouldn't have had the chance to pour into my kids the way that I was able to because first of all I had a lot more time and secondly they were just here to experience um they're here to experience conversations about leadership experience conversations about how it's okay to be unique uh conversations about thinking outside the box 
and basically getting them ready for the aspects of life that I really think that they should teach in school. Things I didn't really understand or know anything about because they teach you stuff like, I don't know, uh, geometry and uh, trigonometry and things that most people don't end up using, like the majority of people don't end up using. And then they don't teach us things like how to go finance a house and <laughs> They don't teach you how to market something or do branding or, or they don't teach you how to have the right mindset or shift culture or any of that, right? Like life doesn't really, life is what prepares you for life unless you have someone teaching you about life and school doesn't really do it. Um, unless you are fortunate to be part of a school system that has a really unique curriculum, it's mostly reading, writing, and arithmetic history, which is probably mostly fake and those types of things. And so, um, I'm just reading comment. Hang on. Well, I'm going to basically take a picture of that comment and frame it on the wall. Cause that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. I'm not gonna read it out loud, but that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna hang that next to my ribbon, my blue ribbon. <laughs> I was in rare form last night, so there's also that. Um, <laughs> this is fun. Okay, I'm gonna turn our music on. <laughs> Good times. Y'all, I try to be a grown up. Sometimes though, I am a little kid on the inside with like a taffy heart. You know what I'm saying? When people start pulling on it, I'm like, stop that, that hurts. Um, yeah. So I have to be publicly grown up and then, you know, throw a little hissy fit in my swimming pool or something, you know, privately <laughs> immature. <laughs> go, splash, go splashing around everywhere. <laughs> Kick in. Yeah, I go. <laughs> uh, it's all fun though. No joke. I've learned so much even about that part about myself. Okay. Um, we had some prayer requests. I had some actually sent in to me. Okay. I don't know. Uh, those of you who are, who are in this chat with Becky, am I allowed to, I wonder if I'm allowed to say her prayer request. I think so or no. Do we know? Okay, I'm just going to say Becky has a family member who was diagnosed. And so uh, I'll just say it like that. And so um, we're going to pray for, for her family and for the children of that family member. Is Jan still on here? Okay, good. I'm hoping your service got better. Looks, it looks like you've been on here this whole time. Okay. So tonight I just want to lift up with a grateful heart. I, I want you guys to do this with me with the whole connecting with your heart because I think you're, I instinctively know we're going to start hearing more about coming out of here and coming here instead out of the mind um, and coming from a more heart-centered place. Uh, I started learning a lot about this a few years ago. I started teaching breakthrough classes for people and it was one of the number one things that really I talked about. And something that seems to happen is if you don't implement something like hardcore habit, 
implement it, then it can tend to get away from you and your whatever part of your brain, the hippocampus or whatever, that shreds information, you just forget about it and don't do it anymore. So I'm, I'm circling it back around, bringing it back around to your remembrance um, to try again, okay? Some people, when they take my, a lot of people, when they take my uh, breakthrough course, and a lot of you have taken my breakthrough course. I, so many of you on here have. A lot of you, when you take my breakthrough class, you may have done so because your life was in a place where you were about to pull your hair out. That's typically what happens, right? When people are on the cloud nine, they're not worried about a breakthrough course usually, okay? They're like, I already done broke through, right? All right. Well, when you're in that place, almost like a sick place inside your brain, sometimes the stuff that should have resonated with you or would have been important to resonate with you uh, doesn't because the cloud over your head literally hasn't parted for you to let it sink, okay? So I'm just going to focus for just a second. We're going to say... You can say this if you want to. I don't, I try not to tell people what to say, but in Yeshua, that's Jesus, Yeshua's mighty name, I command my spirit to take all the thoughts in my mind and put them into my heart. I'm going to say this three times. I command my spirit to th take the thoughts that tend to trespass in my brain, the thoughts in my mind, and put them in my heart. I command my spirit to take the thoughts in my mind and put them in my heart. And just like that, I do this at night now, and it's almost like a windshield wiper a literal sensation that I get where I just kind of settle in. I command my spirit to take the thoughts from my mind and put them in my heart. And for some reason, I learned this on something I listened to, and for some reason, it feels like what I, I recognize as peace when I do that. I don't know why it's three times. I think for my spirit to believe that I'm just for real. I'm not kidding. Let's do this. Especially if you've been chewing on something in your mind all day long. And your spirit really wants to pack it away anyway. God, I just believe so strongly that we filter everything through memories and experiences. And we, we formulate our reactions to things based on old stuff that's not even real anymore, like something that happened 10 years ago. It's not happening today, yet we keep regurgitating it like it is happening. And it's doing us, it's a major injustice and disservice to us that everything filters through something that was real 10 years ago, but is not real, not current right now. That just resonated strong with a few of you. I see like check marks going ding, 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 ding. Those are the things that they don't need to be clouding your mind. Tuck them away. Command my spirit to put those in my heart. God, I thank you for the lessons that I learned in those days. And that those lessons are the fertile soil that I can plant seeds in. But they don't have to be the, the lingering thought processes all day long that I filter current things through. Hurt feelings. It's disservice. It's a disservice to yourself to hang on to it. You realize? Like when Kyle tonight was talking about Oh, 
he definitely talked about this. I can't think exactly what he said, but he was basically talking about mindset and the concept of reacting, trying to draw the words, but that to me all goes back to, oh, I know what he was saying. He's talking about, it filters into the way you act on social media. It filters into the negative mindset that you spew out on other people. And then everyone, when you think you're actually hiding the fact that you have not moved on, you think you're hiding it, but people can see it because it's like squeezing it from the sponge, a nasty, disgusting sponge. You ever picked up, you ever like cooked soup or something like that and then like the sponge drops to the bottom and it's sat in the water for gross, I don't know, a day and then you grab that sponge and it's like full of bacteria, it's gross. And I want you to think of <laughs> when you've gone through something and you haven't let it go, everything that you try to pour on top of that sponge is still going through that nasty sponge. So whatever you're doing today, is going through that nasty sponge and you're just wringing it out on top of all the dishes, the clean dishes, the future. Blah, blah, blah. So it is a choice. Whatever happened to you in the past, if it's not happening right now, is part of the past. And you can choose to move on. That's really sort of a tough love way of saying it's better for you if you let go, if you release, if you forgive. You don't want to be wringing out that nasty sponge on top of tomorrow's dishes or tonight's clean dishes. The dishes of tomorrow. God, we have, we have prayer requests tonight in our hearts, but God, we do not put those through the filter of what we believe and have seen happen in the past because we declare and decree the new wine. solutions, miracles, creative strategies that don't ring through what we think God does, how we think God acts, what we've seen and made a perception in our mind about who God is based on that nasty sponge. Based on relationships with people who pretended to be godly but weren't. We forgive them. We release them. We don't have to keep trying to drag all that dead weight around with us. It's, it is not helpful. Also that sponge tends to drag fear with it. And I'm just going to tell you filtering things through fear is the absolute worst that you think that you can do for your future. Because you're dragging the past into the future, dragging the past into the future. The only way you know to be fearful is because of the past. Like you don't just wake up one day and be like, oh man, that looks like something I should be afraid of. Only experience makes you afraid. So God, we replace fear with wisdom. And I'm going to say, Replacing fear with wisdom and creative strategies, and that's how we're going to open into these prayer requests tonight. God, we just lift up Becky's family member and uh, the, the children involved in this right now. We just believe, we declare and decree a miracle. We declare and decree a clean bill of health for everyone. I'm ready for the miracle stories of COVID-19. God, we declare and decree the miracle stories where people just say, well, you know what happened was I prayed and all my symptoms went away and then my test came back negative after that. I don't know why we're not already hearing about that. I don't, maybe it's because no one's declaring and decreeing it. Let it start with me. Let it start with you. Thank you, God. I want to say, Lori, where have you been? <laughs> Lori, thanks for waking up. <laughs> it's time, girl. It's time. You know, have we had enough? <laughs> we declare and decree 
miraculous strategies that could only come from God. Hold on, I'm gonna grab another. Uh, I'm gonna declare and decree. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing like static over technology, you know, like wires, staticky, all this. And I declare and decree. It's as if like you took an electric cord that's like shooting sparks and it's all awry, it's gone stray. But over technology, we're just gonna see God's hands just smooth. Putting that casing back on those electric wires, everything's flowing smooth. If you don't understand the spirit realm, then I don't know how you, I mean, if you're like the spirit realm, that's weird. I can't see it. Well, you can't see Wi-Fi either though, silly. And yet it's powering the thing you carry in your pocket. You can pick your phone up and like look at Beirut today, right? They're going, wow, that happened in real time three seconds ago and I'm watching it. How is that possible? How do I know if I can believe in God? Well, you believe in Wi-Fi, it's all the same. I mean, it's not the same, but believing, right? Yes. Never even thought about that till tonight. So I declare and decree that over phones, over internet, over Wi-Fi, for anybody who wants to uh, grab onto that, let's do it. Perfect, seamless internet, Technology, communications, Jesus. I don't know, let's see. I'm saying even if, you're, if you've been having trouble, I declare and decree that as you lay hands, the energy that comes off of your hand in the spirit, God's Wi-Fi, clears up your technological problems from yesterday. We're not even going to decipher, or we're not even going to cipher those through our sponge. Nasty old sponge. We're going to buy a new one. Mm-hmm. So over Jan, over Linda, over any problems you guys have been, right? Okay. Now, Sorry, now I'm scrolling into the chat. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So we're going to we're going to focus I'm 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 going to pray and I'm going to teach you about prayer, at least my understanding of it, because I don't believe, I don't typically see it taught, being honest with you. So we have an ambassador whose mom has been on the vent for 22 days, having trouble waking up. Her name is Susan. So right now I declare and decree, Holy Spirit fire fall on Susan. right now in Yeshua's mighty name and it, that it would wake her up peacefully and gently and she would say I think it's a miracle my symptoms are gone and I'm not I'm not wringing this through the old sponge of what I've seen in the past We're going to pray over Linda's family. I just speak peace. Be still and know that God is God. Jesus. God, I just speak a beautiful, joyous time over this family. And Linda, I just speak like the breath of the Holy Spirit just inspired even like new solutions and strategies of how to, how to relate. Um, I even see at like even before he arrives or let's see, you're picking him up even before you go get him, you know, just deep breaths 
and like dropping of the shoulders, the kind of deep breath where you go. <sighs> when I was doing photography, I used to be taking some pictures of somebody. I'd get them in a spot and I'd take their pictures and I'd do three or four sh shots. And then I'd realize, okay, look at me. She's like, like this. And I've got five or six shots and they've already changed positions. And I say, drop your shoulders. And they go, oh, oh gosh, I didn't even know. I didn't even realize. And when they drop their shoulders, their eyebrows relax, their facial lines relax because they were carrying it all up high in that hopeful nothing bad happens position, right? Okay, so I see you breathing and releasing, just like, eh. <laughs> release all the sponge memories, <laughs> let them go. And just may a new wave of the Holy Spirit come over you, All right? over your whole family Thank you, Jesus. and it's going to be beautiful we're just declaring and decreeing that you're going to be so spirit filled that he is going to be so filled with the spirit we're setting up the atmosphere in your home right now for that so that you can just be living in the present and in not in yesterday right not in experiences from the past an expectation of new wine thank you god Yes, God, that you would download supernatural updates to us tonight while we sleep. Supernatural updates to our bodies, to our hearts, our spirits, our minds, our mind, our will, our emotions. And as we release, like as we breathe, as we exhale, anything that is no longer serving us, our highest and best, it's literally being taken far away from us. <laughs> I'm hot too, girl. I got hot. God, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Flood this place. Fill the atmosphere, God, with your presence. Yes. God, we declare and decree that we are plugged directly into the source. The father board, almost said the motherboard, right? We're plugged right in. You know, when I was talking about Holy Spirit downloads, I, I just really believe, I mean, I'm, I'm pulling that from, uh, what Christia said, so I'm totally plagiarizing here, but I'll send you a blue ribbon, Christia. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and keep talking about it because I got some more info as I was thinking about it. So um, the Holy Spirit downloads, I think that's really what this new wine season is going to be about. And if we reject something that doesn't resonate with what we've heard from behind the podium our whole life, God will move on. To the next person until he finds someone that will let it plant its seed and say you know i'm courageous enough to liken god to wi-fi i mean holy spirit you know like that that's not the kind of things that you normally hear maybe i mean that's not too far out there but something that seems new something that seems all you really have to do is say god is that you I don't want to be misrepresenting you, Lord. I mean, if it's not you, I definitely don't want to say it. I don't want to try it, attempt it. Um, but I will say, if that's what always stops you, you're probably not ever going to go anywhere. Like, sometimes I've tried things that I later come back and go, I'm not sure. I don't know if that was God. I didn't see the fruit of it, that it was God. Uh, and then I say, God, if that was not you and I attempted it, I repent. Uh, you know, I'll clean that up. <laughs> Uh, and I come back and I say, I'm here. I'm open. My heart, ears, eyes, all my senses, Lord, are open to you. I fully anticipate. Um, I know that this would have sounded a nutty a year ago if I'd have said, you know, I think the world is going to go through, through something. The whole world. The whole world is going to experience something next year if I had said this last year. The whole world is going to experience something that is going to look like it's wreaking havoc. 
but yeah, we're going to come out on the other side, like the Coca-Cola commercial. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony, right? We're going to come out on the other side of it with so much more wisdom, so much more understanding of what has been operating in our world that we have turned a blind eye to, yet what God's plan is to correct the mess, right? Like when I first started talking about children and trafficking in April, maybe I talked about it in March, I don't remember, I already knew about it. When I first talked about it, I got a whole bunch of raised eyebrows, scally faces, not my favorite, whatever, right? Because that's how, that's how it feels when you're first learning this information, you're like, ah! And now it's mainstream information. And to be honest with you, one of my favorite people that I love to listen to, love to read books, da, 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 he says that tragedy is what brings the world, that's what unifies the world. He says things like hurricanes or when we stop seeing things like, are you from my hood or are you somewhere else? Are you my skin color or are you not? Do you speak my language? Do you not? Are we from different countries? Are we not? Do we watch the same football team? Do we not? Instead it goes, oh my gosh, I have a boat, get in it. Like, are you a living, breathing human being? I'm reaching my hand out, I'm pulling you in my boat because it doesn't matter, we're all humanity, right? And the fact that we treat each other otherwise, the unity comes from when we all see each other as human. That's what, and it almost always takes something reckless, a tragedy, seemingly reckless. Um, a tsunami. I said an earthquake earlier, or I said a, I don't know what I said, but a hurricane maybe, but he actually said a tsunami. Have you ever seen a video of a tsunami like coming in like, that one big wave that's going to literally wipe out an entire town. Did you guys watch the video of what happened in Beirut today? Like a mushroom cloud that they said already 63 dead. And I was like 63 the second it happened and it went like blocks and blocks and blocks and city blocks. It just vaporized. Okay. That kind of stuff. You guys remember the trade center, right? Like, World Trade Centers, you know, what came out of that was at seemingly, even though I think a lot of that was fabricated nonsense, I don't mean the what came out of it, I mean the actual happening was fabricated nonsense, but what came out of it was unity. Everybody was like, we're all Americans. Uh, and here, when it's world, we're all the world. We're humanity, right? Like, I can't stand to watch, I don't like to even think that, the, that when I first was hearing the rumors about the virus before it had come to the stage, just the thought that that was happening over in China to all those people, I, I couldn't stand the thought of that. It's humanity. I, I cannot stand the thought that horrifying things happen to children. And I declare and decree God's creative strategies and miracles that probably look like absolute craziness right now. Let's just be honest. Like whatever's going on behind the scenes, whatever God is doing, whoever God is using, it does not for one second measure up in our minds. as what we think. Like we think Captain America is going to swoop in and, or we think, you know, something is going to happen. Some big green beret. I don't know what they're called. Somebody's going to come in with a, you know, <laughs> muscle man suit on and save the day. But this is not a day. This is decades of absolute nonsense that has gone on in this world. And the world needs Jesus. Like, I want to say, I almost said like never before, but have the, has it not always been like this? We just didn't know about it, right? Like it's been going on forever. It's just that we are, I have, so, I have somebody in my life who, when I start trying to talk about this stuff, 
represents herself in a way that I would say is her ears are too holy to listen to it. That's basically how she asks. She's X. She's like, Oh, I just, Oh, I just, I can't, I can't. And I understand I've, I've, like that's a phase of it. But the way I see it, and this, this is up for argument, just don't argue with me right now, <laughs> but you can argue with me in your mind. But the way I see it is, if someone in this world is going through it, then me hearing about it is minuscule. Me educating myself about it, ed educating my children, educating other people to know what to look out for, understanding that it's real, my ears are not too holy to hear about it. There are people actually experiencing it. Unity. Humanity. Children. If the world could agree on one thing, it would be children should not be hurt. Obviously, there's some people out there that wouldn't agree with that because they're the ones doing it, but the majority of people would be like, this is crazy, and it's not a partisan topic. It is not a Democrat or a Republican topic. People who disagree with me politically would not disagree with me on that. Most of them, I mean, I can't imagine. God, I declare and decree that if we have been in the way, if humanity has been in the way of creative strategies because our ears are too holy to hear, and I'm using that phrase loosely, or if we've been in the way because we've got been so churched that we've been schooled that you just grow up and one of these days you give your money to a mission trip and everything's better then. If that is what we've believed and that's the way we think the world operates and that's the way we think Jesus operates and whatever, forgive us for being so clueless and teach us. May we be truly open. If we've always believed that generational curses were not real, if we've always believed that tra sex trafficking was minor and not a big deal, if we always believed that those types of things happened to other people and would never impact our lives, we repent for all of that mess and we invite the God of truth into our lives, into our realm. We invite you, God. We invite your spirit to come in and wash it clean, Lord. Even if it means, even if it means, and I'm just going to say this, like, if it takes down your presidential candidate, if it takes down my presidential candidate, if it takes down whoever is involved in it, Anybody who's got dirty hands in this, take them down. There's no room for it. Humanity has to come to a collective whole. We have to. It's not a political issue. It's not a political issue. So God, right now, I'm tired of squeezing things through an old sponge. I command the thoughts that float try to trap me in the past and try to trap me in old solutions. If I, if I want to get a creative new idea solution, I got to get rid of the sponge. Mine's gone. It's gone. I want it gone. I declare and decree that nasty old sponge is gone. Wow. God, more and more and more. We just declare more and more and more of what Linda's talking about there. May they be found everywhere. Y'all, I got called crazy on multiple occasions <laughs> when I started talking about this. Like, to my face, shut your mouth. Can't even believe. Whatever, lady. Especially when I was trying to connect it to this virus sounds crazy eyes are opening god i declare and decree right now that eyes are opening all over the world eyes ears and hearts are opening to the revolution that is here it's upon us to the stadium 
that's upon us to the miracle season that is here. God, may we be truly inspired, filled with your spirit. That's what inspired means. Inspired. Spire is spirit. Inspirited. May we be truly inspirited. But what your plan is, God, God, be, be near the ones who have struggled, who have suffered loss because of this. Lord, be ever close to them. Your word says that you are. Your word says that you are close to them. And we declare and decree it for them. We accept it on their behalf and say, yes, 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 Lord, more, more, more. Pour out your love. Pour out your heart. Reveal your truth. In Jesus' mighty name, we lift all of this up. We claim Jesus as our Savior, as the answer, as the truth. Amen. Okay, uh, I will be announcing an upcoming event probably within the next week. If anybody has any great ideas about that or sees some great, if you see some great uh, graphics, rob them for me and send them my way. <laughs> I can come up with the content if the graphics are there, especially if you see several graphics all in one spot that have some of that triplex unboxing eucalypti feel. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. So I'm so grateful to have uh, excellent quality of people to link arms with. <laughs> God bless you guys. I'll talk to you next week.